It's a sublimation of life and <clears throat> people need it and want it because you want to be carried away from, from the trivia and the uh, meaninglessness of life or the tra tragedy of life, you know, you want in something else. People get, if you didn't have art, you know, I mean, uh, obviously it was needed 80,000 years ago in the caves when there was very rough times, you know, and all the lights, you know, ah, no, I don't get <laughs> they had a rough time. And um, it's a tremendous need for it, you know. You need, if you want to call it magic or you want to call it poetry, or you need certainly a sublimation of life because otherwise, what do we have? Um, old age, <laughs> you know, when I'm getting close myself. Uh, it's, it's, you need something to make it easier. That's art, you know. <laughs> oh, I, I sure do. I mean, I think that we do. I think that um, art has existed in every culture. I think it's a way that we as humans make meaning of our experiences and whether it's visual art or um, writing or literature or music, we are exposed to so much around us and it's in our DNA to try to make sense of what we see and what we hear. And I think that art is one of the ways that we do that and we do it for ourselves as artists but also as a way of expressing our individual vision to other people. So I think that we do need art. I think that it's, it, it's a human way of um, expressing meaning and uh, how we've made sense of the world. Does the world need more pictures? I have you looked? <laughs> Come on, turn on the internet. <laughs> we need art. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, the earliest cave paintings were not <laughs> there for no reason. <laughs> no, it, it's and you know, they're all over the place. Now, Thirty thousand years ago, the earliest cave paintings in in France, um, you know, they weren't there just to document, you know, how to you know hunt of bison. <laughs> Part of the reality of art is looking at with an open eye, open heart, open nose, smelling, tasting, feeling, feeling your body, feeling nature. The most important reason for art is the preservation of nature. And when our beauty and our sense of beauty is enhanced by art. And when art is, is something which we as individuals can ad address, this is the salvation of the world. The world is dying. We are killing the world. If we kill art, we blind ourselves, we close our hearts, we can't smell the temptation, we can't talk. Well, art, art galleries are about selling a product. So, what you see in the art gallery is, for the most part, uh, and it depends on the gallery, you know, but I mean, if you go to a gallery that's showing contemporary work, then you're, what you're seeing is the owner's opinion as to what the market will want to will respond to and someone will buy. Uh, if you're going, for example, in Europe, to some of the old established, and even in Manhattan, uh, galleries, and you know, you have uh, uh, Picassos and things like that, and you're buying stuff that has been established, again, in the marketplace, but it's, it's, galleries are marketplace oriented. More so, more so than ever. Um, as I get older, I have a little patience with what I see now. Um, I, I, I taught school up until the early 70s, taught high school and took uh, my students to galleries. And I was doing a lot of the work that I see in galleries now. It was inspired by the movements of the 60s. Uh, it was, um, I, I, was, I was young and my work was formative. It was, it was, I was um, an immature viewpoint. And I was shocked in the years since I had gone to galleries to go back and find out that that stuff is still there. And um, I, I, this is what's coming out of school. It just it doesn't seem to have matured at all. It just doesn't resonate with me and I'm terribly bored 
or when I see it. And um, I've been saying to people, it's, it's kind of like the emperor's new clothes. There is nothing there. <laughs> There's no, th there is no there anymore. But is, but the curators are are, are younger, and they uh, just keep putting that work out. I think you just got to take the time and look. Often I see people come through and they read the tags by the art longer than they look at the art itself. I think best to take your time. Don't go on an opening, go on another time where you can stand where you want to stand for as long as you want to stand. Why is it art that is hanging on the wall? Um, you know, the, uh, the art galleries has a tremendous variation of um, people running it. Uh, it runs from real criminals um, to uh, wonderful people, and <laughs> uh, even the best, you know, galleries like Sotheby's, who's an auction house, have been involved in all kinds of scandals. And um, then, if you uh, really walk around in the different galleries, some people are wonderful or really genuinely interested in in art, you know. But mostly, I think it's, a, um, it's an economical thing, a business thing, you know. I think we're in, uh, still in the period of reinvention. Come on, when was the last time you saw something original? Uh, yeah, we are in a period of uh, complete anarchy and confusion, I would say. Anything goes. My son is also a painter. And I complain about this as well. I think it's wonderful. Now you can choose anything you want, you know. I think people are in exploration. I think people are trying to set, to define what it is to be a human being, and that's as old as time. I think we are in a period, but it's not in a period such as been traditionally uh, defined. Uh, in, in our century, in the 21st century, artists have discovered that they can use all kinds of materials and all kinds of techniques that have never been used before. But it's definitely going to be about diversity, plurality, and, uh, and the struggle that we're having, uh, not only in this country, but throughout the world, to define ourselves as human beings. It feels at times like a very eclectic period. People are doing abstract work, they're doing um, representational work, and um, conceptual work. I think that media probably has and will continue to have an influence on visual arts. I think that uh, people are expanding into different, different ways of Presenting art and um, showing and sharing art certainly is something that's, that's different in terms of what's possible now than in the past. There's a fine line, and everybody has gone over that line. And, uh, and I'm talking about overt um, copying. I mean, uh, you'll take an idea and ideas have been taken from me also. So it's a two-way street. And you distill it and uh, reinterpret it uh, through your, uh, you know, your prism. Um, ideas you grow on, one on top of the other. Uh, taking their work, yeah, that would be stealing, absolutely representing that as your own. But growing on top of that, that that's a learning process. Uh, manipulating things, and that's a terrible word, manipulating. Um, uh, using it as a jumping off point, I think it's very healthy. But just to mimic something else without any other purpose, that's, uh, that's ethically you know, corrupt. <laughs> I find a very uh, uh, impression or, or creative to talk to all the other artists like you. Uh, though, and some people come back and say things like, uh, you, know, you know, Gus, you got to get out of yourself. You got to stop with these straight lines, right angles, and, and 60 fourths of an inch and start doing sculptures, so bending your lines and this and that. Um, very nice that somebody actually takes 
the time to look at my stuff and say, have you considered this? Have you considered that? Push a little more this. That's not so good. How about that? But I really like that. And, uh, and it's, it's getting uh, recognition from peers uh, is really satisfying. Picasso once said, you know, he says, regular artists copy, geniuses steal. There's no reason when I see something and I feel an appeal towards it to the extent that I can utilize it in my own work. Now, if I am a mere copyist, then I'm a mere copyist and it's, you know, okay. If on the other hand I'm a genius, and some people say I'm the first, and some people say I'm the second, I personally lean towards the latter choice. I can't just leave certain things that people do by accident laying there. You know, it'd be like a scientist seeing a, a, a wonderful experiment, but oh, that other guy started this, he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, so I better just leave him, maybe he'll get lucky somewhere in the next 40 years and do it again right, and he'll understand what he did. Sometimes things feed up. Everybody's art comes from someplace, okay? Turn of the century, 19th, 1900s, 20th century. Um, they had influences. They went all the way back to African art, okay? Um, who, 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 where do you think Picasso gets, got his ideas? Where do you think Cubism comes from? It doesn't come from his own mind. It comes from his influences. As my art comes from my influences. Making art your own makes it art. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Of course you are indebted tremendously, Mitchell. Noam Chomsky coined the phrase, I think, maybe he took it from somewhere else, uh, to uh, stand on shoulders of giants. And, um, of course, you learn, if you want to learn anything, you learn it from other artists, that's uh, continuously. And you see it differently, like even you discover in your own art, oh my God, I didn't see. What did I do here? You know, and suddenly you have a whole new angle to it, you know, and um, the same with other artists. You didn't see things, you know, when, you, when I was a teenager, I, I couldn't see really. Either Matisse or Cezanne, you know, that came a little bit later. Once I made enough mistakes, I said, oh, <laughs> uh, but they are your teachers, the other artists. Well, imitation is always great flattery for the person that gets imitated, uh, but you can't possibly do it the way they do it. And so I, I always tell everybody what, exactly what I'm doing, because no one can see it the way I see it. If I come back to it, if, if, I go, if I look at my work after not paying any attention to a piece for a, a couple of years and I'm surprised by it and I say, hey, that's pretty good, then I know it's good. If I'm bored by it or just has, doesn't provoke any response in me, you know, then you know, it's, it's mediocre and so maybe somebody else will like it, but it's not fresh to me anymore. So Oh, well, you never want to recreate exactly the same work, but I love the fact that when something works, the term that we use is that it works. A piece of art works. And I, I've thought about why that is a term that we use and makes so much sense. And I think it's partly because the one who is doing the work is really the viewer. And when something works, it may be because it gives the person who's looking at it enough to work with so that it will have some meaning to them, or is likely to have meaning. So what makes the artist, you know, it's somebody who has understand his time in a way. It's necessary to understand your time. And uh, you take a chance and uh, think you have a good take on it, but it's anybody's guess, really. It takes time before someone can say, oh, that's terrible, or else, hey, yeah, yeah, no, it's got something. <laughs> I think it's tremendously important to be in a network of artists. I think uh, being able to discuss your work, show your work, 
to someone whose opinion you value, discuss what you're seeing of other people's work out there uh, is part of the process. And staying involved in an artist community is, is key to growth. A lot of us go to our own spot. We're all by ourselves. I did it. You did it with the influence of who? Do you know how many people I have up here talking to me when I'm in the studio? You know? One of the things that I always believe in is a, a thing that is known as universal space. And uh, to me, when, when I achieve something within that realm, I believe that I've made what I consider art. Um, Am I thinking about other things at the same time? Yes, to some extent. I'm, um, I'm usually processing a lot of ideas and images that I've been thinking about. So, in a way, you could say it's just me and the canvas or the, the paper. But in another way, you could say that I'm in there with a whole lot of um, other artists, and they could be artists from 100 years ago or 500 years ago. Um, I'm in there with images that I've seen in lots of different places, whether it's museums or in uh, posters or signs that I've seen on the, on the throughway. Um, I'm in there with a lot of other things besides just the... Yeah, I, I'll tell you, uh, I, I'm going to make a political statement. <laughs> Uh, there is a lot of hype today in uh, the adequacy of education in this country and particularly in the areas of science and mathematics. And uh, I love science. I not, have no concept of mathematics on any kind of a level. And uh, I think everything that's being said is important, but I think that the risk involved is to overemphasize that and to de-emphasize the arts. And the thing that makes us different than a computer is exactly that qualitative, non-mathematical, non-formula, non-algorithmic aspect of being a person. And the only way you get that is being by exposed to the arts going on? What's going on? Realistically, uh, something that you put in your house either has functionality or you, it's interesting to look at. If it's interesting to look at, it serves its purpose. If it's functional in addition to interesting to look at, all the better. You get something useful out of it. You don't have to have anything, you don't need an explanation. You look at it and it's pleasing, it's okay. Or thought-provoking, or, or reminiscent, or things of that nature. Not anymore. No, the most, used, it used to be, before uh, digital photography, I think the most creative work was coming out of the, uh, the commercial world. Probably because there was money behind it and you could really experiment. And you had to really think on your feet all the time. So I have great respect for uh, commercial photographers. Uh, now, uh, because the tools are so widely, widely available, uh, many more people uh, can do that. So the playing field is kind of leveled. And so many of, uh, people, so many photographers who become my friends from the commercial world are now attempting to go into fine art because of the, way, the circumstances of the, uh, of the economy. I like to think of art as having a purpose. And I think that art had many purposes over the years, you know, to promote the needs of the church, to, you know, elevate imperial people, or to in many, many, many kinds of things all over the world. I think right now the reason a lot of art is on the wall because it's highly inexplicable. It lends itself to price uh, modification. It's kind of a way of trading stock in art without the embrace of the Security Exchange Commission. Therefore, what you have is a lot of stuff on the wall is there because Mr. A and Mr. B and Mr. C and Mrs. D and so on 
have all agreed to put something on the wall that nobody would have the slightest idea what it's about or to whom it appeals, almost entirely. And therefore, they can sell for anything they want. And they can generate those prices. I kind of don't think that's why I want my art to be there. I want my art to be there in relationship to its relationship to the revivification of our awareness of the world within ourselves, external to ourselves, and our imagination, and most of all, in terms of nature. Mm -hmm.